You are watching the Ars Nova Forever Telethon, a fundraiser for the future of Ars Nova. So uh, before we move into our final segment of the evening, well, of our block of the evening, we want to remind you, this isn't just fun and games. This is a telethon. We're going to raise some money for this amazing theater that made all this stuff happen. Uh, so you can, of course, do it by texting Ars Nova to 44321. Or you can also just click on all the buttons and do all that stuff. Uh, all the gifts for this final half hour will be matched by the amazing Jason Kemper and Thor Perfis. Thank you, Jason and Thor. Um, and now Dave and I are so delighted to share with you a conversation that we recorded um, earlier this week with the incredible and incomparable Danae Benton. Danae is very happily working tonight and so couldn't be with us, but obviously she needed to be a part of tonight. So here she is. Oh. 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 So this is weird. We just spent a long time figuring out how we were going to introduce this because we're all freaked out because now it's Tuesday at December 1st at 2.49 p.m. It looks like we're alive, but we're not alive. That's the Dr. Who reference. Is that true? Yeah, this is the TARDIS. It's a little time machine. I haven't watched it. Thank you. Oh, it's good. I mean, it's a lot. It's a big investment. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. bad. But we are now in the past. It's Tuesday, December 1st with... Uh, and we're going to be seeing our beautiful, fancy friend who is filming something, um, which maybe she'll talk a little bit about with us, um, and who's going to join us here. And and her name is Danae. <laughs> her name is Danae Benton. Danae Benton. Hi, there she is. She's here. Oh, my God. Hi, Hi. Hi. Little... You're here. Okay. I, I watched the whole thing, and I've been reacting as if I was in the room the whole time. But I guess you couldn't see me. You have to watch the little box within the little box to see what's happening. Mm, very <laughs> Doctor Who. Danae, how are you? I haven't seen. I know you and Rachel have seen each other a little bit this year, but I haven't seen you in forever. Where Where have you been? How, how What have you been doing for your twenty twenty? I miss you. I'm good. I'm I'm in New York. That's where I spent most of my time. We kind of like pilgrim home during the summer when. Um, I don't know. It seems like the world was really stopping for a long time. And then we've been here and I've been, I started going back to work at the end of September. And um, that has been positive and a little twilight zony. And I don't know. It's a weird year. Are you allowed to talk about what you're working on? Oh, I am. It's, um, it's called the Gilded Age. It's for HBO. It's from um, the creatives who did Downton Abbey. So I'm back in the 1800s and of course it you guys set me off on a niche that i've been following ever since you look great in a corset you look great out of a corset but um, well I, 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 not too inappropriate to say um yeah danae we when did we meet in 2015 we met in 2015 i think is that what i auditioned that's the lead up to the ART. Cause so you joined us after the infamous run at the tent, yeah. uh, which of course was after the original run at Ars Nova. Um, and as we were beginning to get the show ready for, for Broadway um, before the run at ART. And I wondered if you would like, well, do, what, do, what do you remember first and foremost from like that audition process? Well, the first time I ever auditioned for you guys was for Preludes. And I remember I like really loved both of you quickly. But on my final callback, I had like some kind of cold and I couldn't hear anything. And I remember having to sing for you guys and I couldn't, I literally couldn't hear. Mm. And then I was like, well, I'll never hear from them again in my life. And then I got an audition for Great Comet. And I was like, oh, maybe they love me as much as I love them. Me too. I think I probably even wrote Natasha in. Oh, <laughs> like, I wonder. Because I, yeah. I think I was a little young for the part in yeah. Francis. And then I remember my audition for you guys for Great Comet. That was the first time I ever walked out of a room and I was like, kismet has happened. Like, I'm supposed to be in this thing and in this space with these people. It felt very, like, tingly. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. And do you remember, like, 
as you think about it, how did the show change in your hands? Because I think about it evolving, both like the show and also the very much the role of Natasha, which obviously first initially was molded by Philip Basu, but then like you getting to embody it in this whole other way. And I wondered like how you think about that show's evolution within you, through you. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I think when we were at ART, I felt very strongly within myself that I wasn't being considered to be a part of the Broadway production. I think I just assumed that things would go back to how they were. So I think for ART, I was very present with that experience in a way that I think was special. And because I was scared because there was this kind of tight knit group of people, but I felt so embraced by all the unicorns. And I think because everyone was getting used to this new proscenium space, there was a newness for everyone that I felt like I could be a part of the like recreation of Natasha in that space versus the tent vibe. Um, and so I felt, I felt a lot of freedom because I think that you guys were all feeling a newness as well. So I didn't feel like I was joining something that had been cemented in stone already, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, yeah, there was like such a the like, huger the ensemble like added such a different energy. Yeah, and, and yeah. the proscenium and everything felt like everyone was like, ah, what are we gonna do? And yeah. I felt that with Natasha too, which was nice. Totally. Yeah. I Did remember I want- feeling like I would never learn the music <laughs> <laughs> in my like apartment trying to. <laughs> <laughs> Danae, one of my one of my like fondest memories of of you and I working on that show is is the day that I we made the tragic decision to cut the song Natasha Lost, and I really I remember like looking because I love that song so much I loved the way that you sang that song so much and it was just like Act One was just like we added dust and ashes like oh my God when's this act gonna be over and I remember like Rachel and I walking down Forty Sixth Street and like coming to this moment of like is Natasha Lost like really needed is it working like would it actually make her arc strong and I was just like oh but I can't do that to Danae like that feels so horrible and. But I also was like, as a writer coming around to like understanding how it was, but I was so nervous, like to come coming to you to like give you this news. And you're just like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Let's do it. <laughs> it, was, it was such an incredible moment of actor professionalism. And it just made me just like in such awe of your craft and your commitment to the overall show. And just like, it was a beautiful moment. <laughs> oh, I love that. I didn't know that you felt that way. I mean, I feel like oh, a very Capricorn reaction. We were just talking about our <laughs> size. It's just like, this is what we done. But in all honesty, I don't know if you remember, but Natasha Lost made it so that I basically sang five songs in a row on stage. And yes. when you cut that song, it meant that I had time to run off stage and pee. And so I was very happy. About I remember it. it as the pee break. That <laughs> I had time to like sprint and go to the bathroom, yes. which wouldn't have happened really in Act One, yeah. or it would have. It just added another like six to seven minutes. So I was relieved, even though I loved that song. You were literally relieved. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Janae, do you have a favorite comment memory? Oh my gosh, there's so many of them. I mean, like. I don't know we'll if I'll- We can take a few. Yeah, I think the people that I got to meet with that show through you guys and like the, I always say that Rachel like attracts magical unicorns. I think it's like your gift in life. And I've gotten to meet even more amazing people because of Great Comet. But I would say if I had to pick one, it would be, honestly, it was during the last show, which was such like a complex, devastating, like, beautiful day and I remember after the Balaga dance break we all just like gave it like we were ready to just dislocate shoulders and give it everything we had and we all fell to the ground and everyone on stage all of us were like weeping and laughing and our heart rates were about to explode and the audience was like cheering so loud I could feel the vibration of their sound in my body and it was like I've never felt that alive on stage and I don't know if I ever will again. And I'm like, okay with that. Mm. Very comet. It was like a blazing moment, you know? Yes. Oh my God. I don't think I ever have cried as much as I did on that. Yeah. Day, that like 48 hour period in terms of the grief. So alive. 
Yeah. And, and actually performing that night, like just all the, the layers of what was going on of telling the story of the comet and then the story of the show and the story of just us as humans. Like I still yeah. remember every second of singing Pierre and Natasha with you that night. Yeah. And getting to touch your face, Dave, on that last show and have that line about gratitude. I'm was, sorry to care now. <laughs> it was just so much because yeah. it changed my life and you don't ever profoundly get to thank people in that way. And I felt like we got to have that moment together. It was, um, yeah, that moment with you was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Very grateful. Well, now I'm going to cry. <laughs> um, Danae, I'm so glad that you were able to join us even in this strange flashback in time um with you it's really time i will always join you guys yeah and now in the present moment we're about to talk with another very special guest that's true tell josh i love him i don't I know if i spoiled it ah it's so great <laughs> yeah josh, josh okay. groban he's coming up okay bye danae we bye love, you. love you love you both so much love you. Rach, I, I just can't believe that you made the decision to get such an incredible haircut between those two videos. Because that moment was just, you look incredible. Thanks, man. I, it's, gone, it's all going to locks of love. So, you know. Sounds great. Yeah, yeah. Um, so next. Oh, that, yeah. So, yeah, we already said who's happening next. It's it's true. Josh Groban. 